five already. Who knows? Let's see. Let's see what's going on over here. anything done. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> well, I guess I'm already live. Look at that. Let me turn my iPad on so I can see what people got to say. <laughs> Move this out of frame so nobody peeps peeps my screen. Uh, I think that's probably good. Anyway, good morning, folks. I just want to do a quick, uh, quick little good morning here. And uh, I printed these three D pumpkins last night and I really just want to let me turn this volume last back night. here and I really just want to before I got to take my kids to school just see about painting them uh, getting them started with some paint um, I tell you this 3D printing is something <laughs> if you're looking to just push the print button and come out with awesome products you're going to be surprised uh, I mean I knew there would be more to it than that but it is uh, definitely a bit of a learning curve it's not that it's difficult but there's just so many seems to be so many factors in how the prints come out uh, as far as resin types, curing times, base layers, you know, then you've got to go through your whole deal with your supports and, you know, cleaning the prints and, you know, it's, it's definitely not uh, the quickest process, but honestly, other than clay, I wouldn't know how to make a, a pumpkin for a diorama. Uh, than, than the resin 3D printer. So that's why I got it. Um, I thought it'd be pretty cool to uh, to use in addition to the foam and stuff that I that I build with. Um, let me just get my iPad set up here off of Wi-Fi so I can kind of just see, track what, what's, what's happening. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, you know, so it, it definitely is a little bit different than than I had thought initially that it would be. Um, it's not bad, it's just not, it's just a little more involved than I, than I thought, uh, <laughs> thought it would be. Not that I don't do stuff that's involved <laughs> already, uh, you know, with foam and things like that, but, but I mean, these, they, they really do come out pretty nice, uh, other than a few little support issues that I have here where I need to uh, spend a little more time on the cleaning process or changing the way I add the supports to it but it, it really is it's it's pretty cool it's not a uh, let's see the best way to do this I you know it, it's it's all a learning process for me anyway so much of this is new <clears throat> I mean, in regards to the 3D printing and stuff, you know, not not the not the other stuff. I'm just going to put a little, see how this resin takes this black in here. I really just want to get this dry brush this into the into the the lines of the uh, pumpkin here. I'm not so worried if it goes other places, but my main goal is getting it in the lines of the pumpkin. And it seems like this resin is going to suck this paint right up. It's just acrylic paints from uh, Walmart. I'm not airbrushing these. Um, I don't mind so much if it goes other places, which is good because that's what it's doing. But I just really want to get it down in these lines. Um, 
the grooves of the pumpkin. And uh, <laughs> these guys did come out pretty cool. I just printed these off of uh, um, uh, Thingiverse. You know, I didn't make these, but but uh, we're just gonna get it a little. If this was foam, I'd call it a black wash. I just want to get these crevices in here with a nice black uh, color. But I did print these off of a thing of hers. And so I didn't design these. I tell you, that's another thing about this 3D printing. You can print out so much stuff that other people have already designed, you know, for free. But making the stuff. So making this stuff is a whole different process uh, especially for the 3d uh, resin printing um, I took and uh, now the th I have a, th a filament printer also which man that really prints fast or, or faster and um, you don't have to wait so long to see if your file <laughs> is actually going to mess up or if it's going to print <laughs> But uh, the the, the resin uh, the the filament printer is pretty neat in that um, what it might lack in detail uh, it makes up for in it's it's just an easier process to print with uh, the cleanup is easier and faster and you know once you get your temperature uh, and everything set for the uh, the uh, plate and the the filament. And you get that right and your bed is level, I mean, you're good, you know. You can just go ahead and if you're using the same filament, then you can just go ahead and keep on rolling. Uh, and cleanup is really, really pretty simple also. And I probably could have... So each, each type of printer has its own merit, you know. Has its own pro and con to... Uh, Let's get this stuff in there. It has its own pro and con that I like, um, and and it is a learning learning process. But what an awesome thing to be able to learn when you sit and think about it, though. You pour some liquid into a tub, and it turns into something solid. <laughs> I mean, at the at the basic level, that's what it is. You pour a liquid into a vat. And UV light exposes each layer until you get your finished product. Uh, who would have thought? I mean, that's incredible. It's really, really incredible uh, what you can... There we go. Uh, and I think the ones I'm going to use for... I've got an idea that I want to shoot. Hey, what's going on, Snapface? Good morning, man. Good morning. It's morning here. I'm going to take my kids to school in a bit. I figured I'd get on here and... Do a little quick uh, paint job with these 3D printed pumpkins that I did, uh, you know, before I went to uh, take them to school and and uh, get my, my day going. But uh, do you get your Frankenstein in there? Oh, right on, man. You got it. Okay, cool. You going to be on Instagram with it later? <laughs> I bet you're finally happy that that showed up. That took a minute, too, man. That took a while. I'm just laying down a quick little dark base of the the grooves and the, the wrinkles in this guy. Because he's got a little face on him. Let me see if I can bring this up on screen and show it a little bit better. There's a little lag in my camera. I'm holding it up there, so we'll wait till it catches up. But uh, you can kind of see the little face on this rascal. He's he's uh, looks like he's kind of mad. <laughs> yeah, you think I it got lost in the system? Oh, okay. Doesn't yeah. I love the system, right? <laughs> it's it's something. Uh, good or bad, the system is what it is. So at any rate, yeah, we're just. I don't know if you guys can see the little face on here, but at any rate, I just, uh, I'm going to go in and just lightly paint with some black in the crevices, you know, of this uh, face here, so that when I do put my oranges and browns in, that it, uh, 
we've got some good uh, looking shadows in here and this resin you know it's interesting because uh, oh uh, it I printed this last night I printed three of them it took um, about five hours and 40 minutes or so you know part of the thing about part of the thing about this 3d printing is it's like I was saying earlier there's the whole print process and then there's the whole cleanup and curing process also um, that goes along with it so by the time I was said and done you know it probably took me uh, you know five hours and 40 minutes I, I went to bed you know I only sleep about six hours a night so uh, by the time I you know started it and went to bed and woke up they were done um, and then I you know I got to take them off of there and then I got to clean them and then I put them in this big vat of alcohol it's like a, a washing station and I uh, let them spin around in there for about 10 minutes and then I do a little light sanding on them you know I probably invested as far as print and clean time probably you know six and a half hours but I was asleep most of that <laughs> so yeah you know it it is man um it's not just print it you know push push control P and select the printer like in Windows and there you go but but I will say that there's no other way that I can print other than making out of clay I wouldn't be able to make pumpkins for a diorama that, that I want to do a shoot with Jason maybe today or tomorrow and I you know this is just a cool way to be able to do it uh, but it is it is a little involved but you know what uh, you know it's is what it is it, but it definitely does take more uh, you know it's just a little more processed than uh, I had originally thought and and I don't mind it I mean I've got you know what else would I be doing right uh, but once you get some of the basic parts of the learning curve down then, then you're okay and I got that filament printer too it's uh it's a little different. I could probably print this on the filament printer also, and it would be, see, these are solid. These are solid, heavy pieces. The filament printer, uh, I can make them hollow. I can make them hollow in the resin printer too. I just don't know how yet, but actually I like the solid piece. I, I like that it's solid and not hollow, but the filament printer is, uh, is a little different also uh, in, in how it looks in the end. Uh, you know, this is a definitely the ability to take a small piece like this with the amount of detail in the face. It really, uh, the resin printer is perfect for that, uh, you know. But then there's the whole, like I say, the cleanup process and everything. Yeah, you can't buy these things. Yeah, <clears throat> you know, you're you're right. It uh, and and maybe it's it's good because. <laughs> I would spend a lot of money on them so maybe it's better I can't buy them and I could just make them <laughs> you know so um let me add a little bit more black in this little rascal's uh, face up here just to this one is actually gonna be the one Jason is holding I got an idea for a shoot that I want to do with just basically a silhouette shot uh, like a movie poster kind of silhouette shot where He's holding a pumpkin in one hand, and he's holding a, his, you know, good machete in the other. And there's a single light behind uh, with maybe... I'm going to position the camera on axis with the light so that I get a light burst uh, through there and um, stop the aperture down, you know, 11 or 16 or so. Or uh, Well, no, I'm going to be doing that with flash, so I don't really... Well, no, actually, I'll have to do that with the loom cube because my I can't put the flash behind Jason. It's too big. Uh, so, yeah, we'll we'll create a little light burst from behind him with a little little star burst and probably F11 or something like that. And I'll get a little uh, silhouette shot with some rim lighting on him, and he'll be holding a machete. And and I'll probably just have a dark background, uh, maybe a little fog or something we'll see but I got a, kind of an idea that I'm working toward and I and I want him to have a pumpkin so uh, 
Uh, but anyway, we've got some black washed pumpkins here. Uh, I am going to take another brush here. This little rascal should be pretty dry. Um, I'm going to just paint the eyes in solid black because that's what I... Uh, well, actually, I should probably do that last. I'll do that last. But, um, <clears throat> you know... <laughs> It's fun, and I'm sitting here. Like I say, I, I just get up. I get up early in the morning. I I sleep as little as possible. <laughs> Let me see if I can get a, a stiffer brush out of here. I sleep as little as possible because, you know, by the time a fella goes to work and comes home and then he gets his days off, I just really need to maximize the amount of time I I'm able to, you know, do what I want. And. uh so, I try to sleep as little as I can. <laughs> what you got going on, on over there today in your neck of the woods? Anything exciting? Let's dab some of this extra paint off and let's, uh, maybe a little bit more, we'll see. This resin takes the print, or the paint kind of, kind of differently too. I tell you, it's not, uh, it's not like painting foam. It really does uh, take everything quite different. Let's see here. Ten thirty. Woo. Well, yeah, get it, get, man. No time like the present. <laughs> get it done. You know, that's what I do. For sure. Do you have an idea that you're going off of a picture or something, or do you have it just in your mind what you're gonna, what you're working toward? And ten thirty. Heck, when it's when it's time to build stuff, man. Ten thirty. That's a fine time. <laughs> Put the music on. Well, you know, for me, I can go out in my garage and I can turn my music on and, you know, I don't bother nobody in my house. So it works out good, you know. But uh, I put on my old metal or King Diamond or something to put me in the mood, a little Godsmack or something, man, and, and go to town, you know, with some coffee. So this this stuff takes paint quite a bit different. It's uh another part of the learning curve here, you know. I'm using dolls furniture for the inside of an old fashioned house, cool, with homemade machine to bring Frankie cool man. That ought to be pretty cool, you know. Look forward to seeing it on uh Instagram. Good old Instagram. Seems like this is going to take quite a few coats. This, uh, it may be better on these to not do the traditional way that I do the foam where I do the black wash and then I do the, it may be better just to do the black at the end. But we'll see. I've got nothing but time until I don't, <laughs> you know. Let's see. Drag a little more on here and see if my there we go. <clears throat> oh, yeah. You know, or bolts in the neck. I made a really cool, uh, I made an electric chair a few years ago. You should, it's a, uh, where I actually made a, a helmet and everything to go on Freddy Krueger. And, uh, man, that thing, uh, 
it, it came out really nicely and I actually used real real sparks for the chair uh, and I did the photography um, and I used I used uh, this green cap from a, a an old fire spent firework that I had and man, uh, it came out really nice making making the making a cap for him. Uh, you know, there's so many things, so many different ways you can go. Yeah, there's or a tinfoil hat. There you go. Yeah, uh, and and um, the hat would be pretty cool. The bolts would be so small to do, man. Uh, that would you'd really have to get in there and do something. Uh, you know tiny with that man but um did you get the mesh call you got the uh the the NECA right I keep saying I'm gonna get get that figure and I if I find the mesh code when I'm gonna get it uh for a reasonable price I'm not gonna spend 200 bucks on it and right now being that it's close to Halloween everybody wants to charge more for the used <laughs> Halloween figures you know yeah NECA cool right on yeah uh I just got a Jason, Jason uh, 3D, you know, uh, part three Jason in. I had the Mezco of him, and like a dummy, you know, I sold him. Uh, but I do have a, uh, that new, well, it's not new, but I, I just got it in, the uh, 3D Jason. So I'm going to do something with, with that rascal. Jason, I think, you know. Of all the figures, I, I like Jason, and, and they NECA has so many Jasons. Um, I do like Jason. Jason and Freddy, I think, probably would be my two favorite uh, characters of, you know, just doing photography with. Um, but but NECA has a great Chainsaw Massacre figure too, man. Uh, I don't really, I mean, that that's a cool figure as far as the movie or whatever it's all right but they did a really good job with that figure i really like the way that figure came out with the chainsaw and everything it looks really really nice um i wouldn't say he's one of my favorite characters as far as just storyline and stuff but but uh that character man they really did a good job with that one and uh but i my go-to is my go-to for food is steak, and my go-to for action figures is Jason and, and Freddy. <laughs> you know? Uh, and uh, they just always photograph so well. For a guy that never says anything in a movie, man, he's uh, he's pretty popular. You know? But I, I do mean to get that. I do mean to get that uh, Frankenstein. Yeah, there's a ton of Jasons, man. Uh, and one thing I like about getting the Jasons is you you get the different accessories that, that go with him. Uh, you'll get the different uh, pitchforks or different machetes or different, you know, uh, fire pokers or whatever. You know, you get some different stuff that goes with him. And, and I like that. Um, you know, <clears throat> NECA isn't isn't the best on on Jason's face. Some of the faces that they <laughs> that they do aren't really that that great. But uh nobody really gets Jason for his face anyway. They get him for the mask, I guess. So but uh you know but he's a he's a really cool character. And I do like the packaging that they they, they come in. The box is in 3D with the knife poking out at you. I remember when that movie first came out, man. 3D was all the, you know, it was all the thing. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, for the outdoor fireplace, yeah. Oh, yeah, the, the little fire pit that he came with. Yeah, that's a pretty cool one. Uh, that's definitely a cool one. And I'm just building up the layers on this. This this takes a... Uh, this acrylic paint on this resin, it takes a minute. To, uh, I'm doing really light coats and just kind of building it up. But, yeah, he, uh, I have, I have most of the Jasons from NECA. Uh, <clears throat> I think there's a new one out, but I, I don't have that one. 
Uh, but but um, I I do have most of those rascals. I like the, the Mesco has got a nice Jason the, the Part Three. They did a really really nice job on on his face and just the skin tones and everything looks really really nice. I really like the way they did it. Uh, but you know those figures. The thing about Mesco is you're you're gonna spend at least 90 bucks on a figure and they go up from there you know whereas you can get a, a but they're really super posable that's the thing NECA you're going to spend half that well sometimes you'll spend you know 50 60 bucks on a figure but you'll spend half of what you spend on a on a Mezco figure uh but and they and they're really finely detailed because they're in the PVC, but they just don't they don't pose as well as uh, the the Mezco ones. But you know, you always make it happen and make it work. And and it works out nice. You know, posing's never really been a problem. I've never I the only figure I didn't like to to pose was that neck and nun. Gosh, man, she was she's a really cool figure, but under that huge dress, she had these tiny chicken legs with these teeny tiny feet that you could never she would never stand up on her own. It was like the most ridiculous, the most ridiculous figure to ever try to pose. Uh, so I just leaned her up against a tree in one of my shoots because <laughs> she was man, she sucked for posing tiny old chicken legs, man, and teeny tiny little feet with shoes on. Holding up that big character, you know, it was, wasn't, uh, it was a bit of a challenge. We got it done, but, but I think that's one of the characters, even though I really liked the way it looked, I, that po posing that character was, man, it was a lot of work. And some of the naked figures, they don't pose as well as, you know, you would like. But I, I like NECA, man. I like NECA figures. Get that little piece of stuff off of there. So I went with acrylics on this. I just gotta let it dry more. I'm being impatient. <laughs> These little guys came out really cool, man. I really like them. <laughs> clay was an option. I, I bought a bunch of stuff to do some clay stuff, uh, you know, to make some little clay props. And uh, I'm excited to, to start using a little bit of that too. But but this 3D printing, this was, was a better option for me right now because... I'm not going to try to make a face with clay. It would be disastrous. <laughs> you know, it would be disastrous. So while that dries for a second, let's uh, work on this other one. This is the one I'm actually going to use in the dio, or with the, the photo shoot with Jason. This one is, is scaled more to, to his size. Did you get the, didn't the, the Frankenstein come in a color and a black and white? Which one did you get? Bit of dry paint on that rascal. <clears throat> Let that little rascal dry for a moment. <clears throat>
You can hear the trains in the background. Hey, don't blame me, man. <laughs> uh, you can blame me. It's okay. I'm way over here. <laughs> uh, it's always something, you know. One thing leads to one thing leads to four more things, it seems like. One you know, you buy one thing and it's never an end in, in, in itself. It always there's always something else you have to get that goes with it, you know. <laughs> That's for sure. You know, if you get a 3D printer, you're going to need alcohol. You're going to need, you know, uh, the, the, uh, let me show you something. Uh, you're going to need the, the resin. And I'm not even joking. This, this little box of resin right here, it's only 500 grams. It was like 30 bucks. You know, I mean, it's, it's adds up, but then, you know, you just pour back in the bottle, what you don't use through a filter. Uh, so you don't waste it, but and I've got some less expensive resins. Well, they're not less expensive, but you just get more of them. So I guess they're kind of less expensive. But I, I didn't really like those. But yeah, you know, tell her, you know, there's worse things you could spend money on, and you're not gonna, you're not gonna take money with you when you go. So, you know, might as well enjoy some of it while you're alive. <laughs> you know. Uh, I always tell my wife, oh man, I got it on sale. She knows, she, she knows I'm full of crap, but <laughs> she, she, uh, she goes along with it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there's uh you're going to spend money on alcohol. You're going to spend money on, uh, you know, different things that go with the printer, different resins. Things like that. Yeah. Yeah, you can buy products, build products you can't buy. And that's that's exactly why I got it. You know. That's exactly why I got it. And uh, painting is a bit of a, a beast. You know, I this is only like the second thing that I've painted and I've got to come up with a better way to to do this because it seems like this um I mean maybe airbrushing uh I'm not sure yet exactly the way I want to go with it it seems like the painting at least for these simple things that I'm painting I've really uh and I and I used a gray I used a gray um resin if I use a white resin then I could it would probably be faster but I, I want the dark bottom it's not like painting foam painting foam you build your stuff on top of you build your paint on top of the other colors um this here you could probably just go ahead and start right with orange and then paint black at the end I don't know but but uh it seems to take a little bit longer to paint this paint these in between each layer but we're getting there. We're getting there. Part of the thing is you just gotta wait and let it dry, and I, and I'm and I don't do that. <laughs> oh, they love a sale. Yeah. <laughs> Even when there's really no sale, I just tell her it's on sale. How much was that nine hundred dollar printer? Oh man, you won't believe it, babe. I bought it for fifty bucks. <laughs> yeah, she knows. She knows that's not entirely accurate. <laughs> but you know. She lets me do it. We've been married 20, 21 years. Yeah, painting is kind of a chore. Um... Without a doubt... And especially on, I mean, 
on really small pieces but that's part of the part of the fun and learning the best ways to get it done you know it's kind of uh kind of fun just learning new things you know like with clay if I did this out of clay you know I just probably do uh probably do it in the color of the, the the orange and then just paint the black on there I bought like I say I bought the stuff to do clay but clay is its own little beast also uh and um it looks pretty fun uh that you know making little things uh with clay been watching some videos on on that and uh it's pretty neat if only i had time to do every single thing i ever wanted <laughs> yeah. you know oh man the things that that you can make nowadays the, the the miniatures and the the different things that people are are involved in and and the ways they can they can create it's just so so impressive man you know it's really, really fun. There we go. We're getting there. Building it up. <clears throat> yeah, it would, it would, it, you know, well, and, and, and you're absolutely right. I just wanted clay for simple things like telephones or, you know, maybe some dishes or, you know, uh, just small, simple little things. Um, no faces or nothing like that. Nothing really intricate, but, uh, you know, just um, small things like that. Like, I saw this one lady, she made a telephone for her diorama with the clay, and she used it to make, like, the clay to make some different, you know, supporting little accessories that go into that went into her diorama that you couldn't make like with a foam and uh man it just looked really really cool when somebody's good at something they make it look so stinking easy too <laughs> that's the other deceptive thing uh you know but it does each thing has it requires its own little its own little uh learning curve and its own time to Time to get good at it, you know. Fortunately, the stuff that I make, I don't. My my main my main uh, focus in my photography is the action figure. The other stuff is is there to add to the scene. But but uh, fortunately, I don't have to make super ultra realistic stuff because I don't think, <laughs> I don't think I'd be that good at it. <laughs> you know. But building these layers of paint up on these, I tell you what. Sure, uh, takes a little time. Get out of there. There we go. <clears throat> and I did, I did get another GoPro. I wanted to be able to do live photo shoots. Uh, I just got to make sure that I had to go through a little tech support with it because it was kind of weird. Uh, but I want to do live photo shoots, uh, with the with it and um I think that'd be pretty cool to live stream the photo shoots themselves so I don't have to go back through later uh and always edit and make a video out of it sometimes doing the live shoot it would show show people too in real time even though my videos are pretty much you know kind of in real time with a few edits but but it, it's kind of a I'd like to be able to do that uh, as a live feature too I think it'd be pretty cool you don't do uh, <clears throat> you in your photography uh, what do you um, what kind of stuff do you have what do you what do you set up do you have uh, what kind of camera do you have or, or do you have any lights or what do you what do you use when you do your shooting
I'm going to build up the, all around the pumpkin and leave the face mostly with a lot of the darker color in there. G3500, okay. Oh yeah, newer lights. No, I started out, I, I bought newer lights. I had some uh, in the beginning, uh, years ago. And uh, man, they're an inexpensive way to get into into learning, you know, how to use flashes and constant light sources and stuff, no doubt, man. Loom cubes are great. Uh, I like the loom cubes because they're really super portable. Um, and you can kind of hide them and do different things with them. Uh, they can get pricey though. Um, without a doubt but I do like that you can control them with your phone that's really cool especially if you're hiding them somewhere and you you want to put them on the set hide them and and they're not easily uh, you're not able able to get to them easily without disturbing the set being able to adjust the their brightness from the phone is really really an awesome feature to to have you know go to speed lights yeah yeah, I, uh, Godox and Flashpoint, they're, they're you know, the brand of B&H and Adorama. I, I have uh, the Explore 600, which is, uh, right on. Yeah, I, uh, I use the, I've got the two flashes uh, that I use, well, I used them both in the Pennywise with the box. I used two flashes, one, two, and then I used two loom cubes and two flashes in that one. I love, I love being able to use flash. Uh, flash is super cool. Those little figures you did, those are like little statues. Uh, they're not, they're not, uh, they don't articulate, huh? They're not like posable. They're really cool looking though, man. There's a lot of detail in those. Yeah, Bowen's mount. That's, um, let me grab one. It's Bowen's mount is nice. I get one to show you real quick. I, uh, this is one that I have, and I just bought off at uh, bought this uh, my one flash that I have from uh, Adorama, uh, or you could put a speed light in here. I I have um, this one, and I used it on my last shoot with Pennywise because that flash that I have there is a. Uh, that flash, let me show you, man. That's a really cool flash. That, uh, it's the, um, I don't want to get paint on it. Uh, this flash, and I've had it for, since it, oh, the Evolve 200. <clears throat> really nice. Uh, and it fits right in that, uh, Bowen's mount. Uh, that Bowen's mount is a real nice tool to have. And this flash comes with the barn doors and grids, and, and it actually comes with a flash, uh, a regular flash bulb, too, or uh, this built-in flash that it has. It's really, really a nice tool to have. But that Bowen's mount is really, really, uh, like you say, a good uh, mount to have. And that just screws onto a, you know, a light stand. You know, let's see. We're getting there little by dang little. I have to wait for each layer to dry. Normally, I'd have my my heat gun out, <laughs> drying it, drying it faster. <clears throat> I 
These little pumpkins are going to be cool. They're going to be super. I'm going to be happy with these little rascals, man. <laughs> ah, where's my coffee cup? I need coffee. <clears throat> These little ones are a beast to paint, but Well, yeah. Yeah, they're your sun statues. Oh, smaller than four inches? Wow, that's... Yeah. Man, that figure is cool. There's there's a couple of NECA figures of the Trick or Treat Sam. One has the cloth head and really, really a cool figure. Then there's the other NECA one that has um, where he's all PVC. Uh both of them are really, really cool figures, man. Uh, I would definitely, if you have a chance, get those. Those are just really neat uh, little figures to have. Uh, I did a photo with one where he's taking the head off a reanimator and putting it on the Christmas tree as a Christmas tree topper. <laughs> it's pretty cool. But I like that figure, man. That's a cool little figure for real. Yeah, if you have a chance, pick that up for sure. But all those figures tend to be a little more expensive around Halloween, it seems like. But yeah, definitely, if you have a chance, pick pick that guy up. We're getting there. He's he's coming out. A few more coats to even it out. But we're, we're getting there. Oh, I think the cloth one is 8 inch and the other one is small like Chucky. Oh, okay. I had, I forget how tall the one was that I had. Uh, I bought it, I, f I happened to find it at Target. Uh... Because over here, Target is the one that carries NECA, if, unless you just buy it on Amazon or something. But but um, uh, I think he was probably, yeah, he was probably, a, well, he was bigger than Chucky's size. But because Chucky, he was, man, I, 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 li I like shooting Chucky ones too, man. Chucky came with so many cool accessories. Uh, the only problem with Chucky accessories was they were fitted for Chucky, so you couldn't really use them on any other figures. <laughs> but he came with some great figures, little knives and pistols, and, uh, you know, man, it was really cool. I, I liked that figure. That was a... I wanted to buy the set with uh, him and the bride, but, man, that's just way too expensive. You know, it was like 150 bucks, man. I just couldn't bring myself to do it. <laughs> you know? But, yeah, definitely, man. I, if I were you, I would definitely pick up... Uh, that trick or treat Sam if you have the chance, you know. Even some of these spots out here. Should let it dry more between coats, that would help, but it's all right. Yeah, they they are, man. I mean, I have found like Popeye and stuff like that where he was reasonable because I got him like with no box and stuff. And, and I don't really care about boxes. I don't really collect the figures, but you know, you got to buy them to take pictures of them. So you kind of collect them, but I don't care if they have boxes or not necessarily. Um, if I can buy something on eBay and it's it's used but it has all the accessories and maybe the box is banged up or whatever or something I don't really care about then I'll buy them used on eBay um, but yeah I don't because they man they do they can get pricey uh, that Popeye that I got you know he sells for like uh, 180 bucks or something like that and I got him because he didn't have a box he had all the accessories and everything but I got him because I think it was only like a hundred and 
It's like 125 or something, you know. Yeah, I just I buy them to photograph because they're just really cool, and it just ends up that I end up having figures, <laughs> you know. Uh, but I'm not, you know, I, I had a whole bunch, and then I sold them, and then I bought more, and uh, you know, uh, but I just it's hard to like you say I don't, I'm not gonna spend 200 bucks on a figure, man. That's just just to photograph it, you know. I mean. Like I say, I'll look on eBay. I'll look for it used. Uh, and I'll try to find, like, Craigslist or even some of the Facebook groups that where they sell the figures. Um, I'll, I'll try to buy it used. Just like you say, because I'm not buying it to collect it and keep it in a box on a shelf and never open it, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, I hear you on that. Yeah, it's... Uh, They can get expensive. So I try to do... I do. I try to find the used ones if I can. Except for NECA. NECA's in, inexpensive, but... Well, I say that. I mean, not everybody has the same budget, but uh, they're a more inexpensive figure, and you can buy them used also on eBay. This rascal on here. I'll take my kids to school in a little while. It's a getting there. <laughs> what got you into doing the toy photography? <clears throat> got me into it was doing macro photography and then I, I saw I somehow I got I saw some toy photography and I'm like whoa that looks really cool man and I just think I just got into it like that And I had the gear already. I used to do portraits. I I did portraits and uh you know, I've got a couple magazines and stuff that I got in with doing portraits, but I'm not a fan of 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 portraits of people personally. I'm I, I mean uh I'm not uh I really like the quietness of just doing stuff in the studio as opposed to doing portraits um, is what I mean to say. Uh, and part of the thing about portraits too <clears throat> yeah, from the train sets, yeah. Man, I love train sets. <laughs> and I, I think Part of the thing that turned me off about portraits of people was that that you could take a photo of a chick next to a dumpster on fire with no lighting, with no skill, with 
high noon overhead undiffused lighting and it's going to get a million likes, <laughs> you know, on Instagram or something. Everybody's going to like it just because it's a hot chick, not necessarily because there was any skill at all involved in taking the photograph. And so that's kind of what... And then you've got something like miniature or toy photography or still life food photography or something like that that actually requires a lot of planning and lighting balance, fill lights, you know, diffuse lights, uh, you know, I mean, just a lot of different things going on in that shot. And, and people, you know, appreciate more the girl next to the dumpster on fire. <laughs> uh, so, you know, it's weird. Uh, nostalgic, yeah. Masters of the Universe. Man, that's back with Thundercats and He-Man and all those, yeah, all those toys take you back. Knight Rider, man. About Knight Rider and G.I. Joe and Nostalgia. Nostalgia can be expensive. <laughs> For sure. Well, what time is it? I'm going to get ready and take my kids to school here. Uh, and I will hop back on here later today after I finish these. And uh, I've got another video I'm going to do. Um, I've got some drone work i got to do too. But I've got uh, another video that I'm going to make. So uh, I'll have something up here shortly. But um, yeah, yeah, you're right about that. Sexy looking toy photography. <laughs> I'm glad you admitted it. <laughs> You know, if I'm going to get ready and take my kids to school, uh, this is where we're at with painting this pumpkins right now. Let me bring this up on screen here so we can kind of take a look and see where we're at with everything. Uh, there's a little bit of a lag on my camera, so I want to make sure I get it on there. There we go. Um, you know, we're getting there. This is the one I'm actually going to have with Jason. So we're building up the layers on, on this and getting it going. But all in all, I mean, it, it printed it printed really well, uh, you know, <laughs> without a doubt. Anyway, let me get this stuff uh, put in some water and uh, take my kids to school. And I appreciate you joining me here. And uh, you take care over there in Australia. Stay up and build something. Don't go to bed. <laughs>